we're going to look at artificial intelligence and how it can enhance our genealogy. In particular, we're going to look at ancestor profiles and what AI can do for us. After doing genealogy for a while, you may have thought that you'd like to create a book uh, that you can give to some of your family members. But what if you don't even know where to begin? And what if you're not a writer? Now, I don't want that be that to be the thing that stops you. So we're going to look at some AI tools and see if we can get a little bit of help to get us going. So we're going to look at how we can create a timeline and discover where we might have some gaps in our research. And we're also going to look at how we can start writing the story. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to gather some facts about our ancestor and then we'll take it over to ChatGPT. So here is my ancestor, Jesse Oliver. He's my great grandfather. And you can see all the facts that I have collected over the years. And what we're going to do is go over to Life Story. And in Life Story, it ha is creating a story based on all the facts that I've added to his profile. So I'm going to do a simple copy and paste, and I'm going to take that over to ChatGPT. And I'm not doing anything special with the, the copy that I'm taking, uh, just uh, doing a copy and paste. So here I am at ChatGPT. Um, I do have a paid account, and so I will say that. Um, also notice that you can choose other um, parts of ChatGPT. So this is ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas. And then you, but you could just use uh, one of the free versions or you can just go back to the ChatGPT 4.0. Um, so this is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to put a prompt, please create a timeline for this person and identify any gaps that need further information and research. So this is a great way to easily figure out what, where you might need to spend more time researching. And I mean, you could look at the at the timeline that they have on Ancestry and do it, but let's see what uh, ChatGPT is going to do for us. So I pasted it, I put all that information, and it put uh, put it in there. And so now we're gonna scroll down, and we're gonna get to the bottom because it's got a lot of information. And so now it's creating the timeline um, and putting all the information that it's gathered as bullet points. And then here you can see the gaps in the research. It's telling you that there's some gaps in childhood and schooling and uh, between 1884 to 1901. It says, little information is available about Jesse's early life and schooling. Investigate local schools school records in Brighton for possible enrollment details. And then, then below that you'll see occupational details and it talks about the Henderson directory at a different time frame. It talks about arriving in Canada and the details of his arrival. Um, other gaps, there's a, a building permit it was, uh, in June of, tw of 1912 and it said that I might want to investigate that further. And also then the resident changes in Edmonton, and it talks about looking at that. Now it says residents in Jasper and Edson, but that was just a different region for the same, for Edmonton, that's what it was called. And then later on, then when they moved to British Columbia, it says that I could investigate more uh, about that. And relationships with half-siblings. Um, Jesse had several half-siblings and their deaths are recorded in various locations looking for correspondence, obituaries, 
or family records that might provide more context on Jesse's relationship with them and if they were there was contact after immigration. So you can see there and then, and then it does go on to give some further actions and places that I might go to do further research. So that is from ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas. And I think that probably the Chat 4.0 would be very similar to this. So let's pause now and have a look at that same information at Perplexity. At Perplexity, I have a free account. And so we're going to give that a go and see what Perplexity can do for doing the same job as we were asking ChatGPT. So um, I'm going to ask this or create a similar prompt with the attached, let's see, spell it right. Can you create a timeline of this person's life and identify any gaps? Let me fix that spelling error for further research and then I just paste and you'll see that it actually goes in as a pasted text and then we're going to press the start and see what it does using it. So again it is identifying the early years and it's putting it into groups, early years, young adulthood, uh, immigration, later life, and then it just is giving more just points of uh, where it sees gaps in research. So no information about Jesse's schooling, similar to what it said at ChatGPT. Then it goes on to limited information about his teen years, uh, gaps between passing his plumber exam and getting married. Um, no mil mention of military service or how these events affected his life. Now I do have his military records, so that's interesting. I could add that to his profile and uh, make a better profile. And then it goes on to say, what were Jesse's main occupations throughout his life? So I could do some additional um, questioning and see what it would tell me. So similar, but still different enough that between the two of them, I could make a pretty good profile, I think. So let's just do one more thing. We're going to slip back to um, chat GPT and see what kind of a story it can create. So now we're here back where we left off at ChatGPT and I'm going to ask ChatGPT and this is the canvas. So canvas is the one that is more of a writing uh, kind of a tool, but um, it probably can do something similar over at Chat 4.0, but we're going to leave it with uh, the canvas. And, and so I'm going to create a prompt that says, now, can you create a story about Jesse Oliver's life? And let's see what it does. So it's going over the information it has. And it, you know, Jesse Oliver was <laughs> born on a crisp January morning in 1884 in the seaside town of Brighton, Sussex. His father, Theophilus, was already 53, a man with a lifetime of stories under his belt, while his mother, Charlotte, at 38, was warm and steadfast. So it becomes more of a story. Now, as you read it, you can decide whether or not it is um, the kind of story that you would write about someone. So whether it has your voice, um, and I don't know if I went and might change my prompt and wrote, um, 
you know, can you write it more in Ellen's voice, what it would do? Uh, let's ask it. So now, now because I started it in Canvas, it all, it makes the stories in this, in the center, but the prompt is over to the side. And so we're going to expand that a little bit so you can see that. But, uh, can you write the story in Ellen's voice and see, I don't know if it'll be quite as flowery as before. So it's actually rewriting it and it's still saying born on a Chris morning lifetime of stories. And so, um, I've been teaching chat GPT for a while. Maybe this is what it thinks my voice is like. And so, uh, let's see what, uh, perplexity does given the same prompt. So now we're back at perplexity and we're on the same prompt that we used before to provide the timeline and the identifying the gaps. So I have copied and we're going to paste the same prompt that I gave to chat GPT and we're going to get it going and see what it tells us and what kind of story it does. So now it says Jesse's life was a journey that spanned two continents and nearly seven decades filled with family work and adventures born in, in on a winter day in 1884 in the seaside town of Brighton, England. Jesse grew up in a large family with both siblings and half siblings. So um, actually this sounds probably a little bit more like me. I'm not really the flowery kind of um, writer, but uh, certainly I could have went over in chat GPT and I could make some edits and changes. But sometimes when you're looking at a blank screen and trying to think, what will I write? Uh, it's really hard. So even if you just use this as sort of a, a springboard to writing a profile for your own ancestor, it might be helpful uh, to begin to write the profiles that would make the family history book that you've always been thinking about writing. So just a thought, um, why don't you try it out and see what kind of things you might get out of doing this. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you do, I hope you will like my videos, but also subscribe, ring that bell so that you get notified the next time I'm adding something new and we'll talk to you soon. Happy hunting.